Welcome to my channel. I'm Jada Bailey, the Mindful Mage, and I'm back. Did you miss me? I miss you guys a lot. Um, but while I was away, I was working on what I could do to kind of bring more of what I'm passionate about into my channel and make it like cohesive, you know, make it work. And I am very passionate about my craft. So I'm very passionate about witchcraft. I'm passionate about my religion and I'm very passionate about history. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm definitely a history nerd. So I thought I would do some videos and especially because all of the hate talk I get about how religion and witchcraft or Christianity and witchcraft just don't go together. I thought I'd do a subset of videos on the history of religion, taking it as far back as I can and how it coincides with witchcraft. Because contrary to what people may think, almost every popular or common or well-known religion is interlaced with magic. In these videos, I am not only going to be talking about Christianity because Christianity, although it is my religion, is not the only religion. So I'm taking it back to the history of religion in general, starting with the oldest and then working my way down the timeline. So in this video, I'm going to share with you the story of creation from one of, if not the oldest civilization that we have record of. And I don't mean the beginning of humanity itself, just those that somewhere down the line deemed it important to record these tales and epics for later generations. I'm talking about ancient Mesopotamia and the pagan beliefs and traditions that were as common back then as Christianity is today. I don't know how many of you guys have ever read the book of Enoch or the Old Testament that have a bunch of tales of these ancient civilizations, but if you've only ever read the Bible or the New Testament, then some of these diverse people should sound familiar to you all the same. The start of agriculture and urban organization are found in the ancient Near East along two major rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates. Ancient Mesopotamia is sort of a catch-all term for the various civilizations and cultures that flourished in that region. These civilizations include the Sumerians, the Babylonians, the Assyrians and other less ancient but closely related Semitic people who adopted Babylonian religion, and the Hittites, which, not gonna lie, I first read as Hit titties or high titties. I really saw titties. I don't know why, but I digress. These cultures are hella old, like super duper old. Sumerian dates back to 3400 BCE, while Old Akkadian, the most ancient Semitic language, dates back to 2300 BCE. The Hebrews did not settle Palestine until the 1200s, and the House of David didn't rule until the 900s BCE. So yeah, pretty old. And in case you don't know how that timeline works, it's kind of the opposite of how ours works. The higher the number, the older it is. Unlike now, where the higher the number, the more recent it is. Like 1500s was a long time ago, but 2020 was last year. The religions of early Mesopotamia directly influenced later Greco-Roman developments. And as Rome grew to encompass the entire Mediterranean, these diverse people and their religious beliefs came to inhabit a shared cultural space. Mithras would make his way to, or well, from Persia or India to Rome and beyond. The Egyptian gods would eventually make their way to Britain and the god of ancient Israel that most of the world worship today, including myself, will in the shape of a new religion, come to conquer the entire empire. And in doing so, will make a lot of these old, other older gods and religious traditions 
all but obsolete. Okay, so since we're starting at the beginning of religion, as far as we know, we will start here by defining religion and also by differentiating between religion and magic. Religion would be human efforts to identify, understand, worship, and cultivate supernatural forces. Magic would be human attempts to compel gods or nature to obey human commands and desires. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get to the creation epic of the Enuma Elish. The Enuma Elish tells the story of creation, as I mentioned earlier, and will serve to introduce us to the mythology and religion of ancient Mesopotamia, a tradition which actually has a lot of similarities with other mythologies and might very well have exerted a lot of influence over them. Our text, the Enuma Elish, comes from the library of the Assyrian king Ashurbanipal, Ash Ashurbanipal, that guy, who reigned from 668 BCE to 627 BCE. His library in Nineveh collected large amounts of religious texts in the shape of clay tablets written in cuneiform. Upon the collapse of his empire, the library was buried in the sand until it was uncovered by modern archaeologists. These texts include stories like the Creation Epic, the Epic of Gilgamesh, the earliest account of the Flood, and later versions featuring Noah, and the descent of Ishtar into Hell. It also includes some prayers, hymns, and chants to be sung at various festivals, ritual texts, incantations, and spells, omen texts, astrological texts, and instructions for divination, but we'll be focusing on the creation epic today. Okay, so in the beginning, there was nothing but water. Tiamat, who was salt water, and her male counterpart, Apsu, who was fresh water. At the time, Tiamat was the supreme goddess. Her and Apsu made babies. They had two sons, Mumu and Anshar, and a daughter, Kishar, who later had a son named Anu, and Anu eventually became the supreme god. Now, Anu had a son named Ea, who apparently was wiser than all the other gods up until this point. And all the younger gods were playing around all loud and crazy, you know, like children tend to do. And that was keeping all the older gods from being able to get sleep, including Tiamat, the former supreme goddess and the mother of all of them, I guess. The young gods wouldn't listen to Apsu when Apsu suggested that they played quietly. So Apsu and his father Mumu suggested that together with Tiamat, they should destroy the rowdy younger gods. Mm. So some of the other gods became aware of this little scheme that Apsu and his baby mama Tiamat and their baby Mumu were planning. So Ea, the wisest god, created a magic circle to protect the younger gods and then a magic spell to render Apsu and Mumu defenseless. Then Ea killed Apsu and led Mumu around by a rope that he had placed through Mumu's nose. And now, sometime after that, Ea had a son, Marduk, who was superior to all the other gods. Sometime later, and for reasons unknown, Anu kicked up some really strong winds that began to disturb Tiamat's waters. And that really pissed Tiamat off. Kingu, one of her children, again proposed the idea of destroying the other gods, adding to his argument the need to avenge Apsu and Mumu with the rope in his nose. Now, Tiamat was probably grieving and distraught and pissed off and sleep deprived, so she agreed. 
She created monsters, and then she gave Kingu the Tablet of Destiny, which was a power that originally belonged to Anu. Ia tells his father and his grandfather, Anshar, that Tiamat and Kingu are again plotting the destruction of the younger gods. Now, Ia and his father, Anu, are too scared to face Tiamat and Kingu and her friends. So, Marduk is elected Supreme God, no, I'm sorry, Supreme Commander, and then he calls an assembly of all the other gods. So, why did all the other gods elect Marduk? Well, apparently, Marduk demonstrated his power to them by using magic. Cough, cough. Witchcraft. The gods say to Marduk, quote, Lord, truly thy decree is first among gods. Say that to wreck or create, it shall be. And then Marduk says, quote, When I open my mouth, the cloth will vanish. But when I speak again, the cloth shall be whole. And at the word of his mouth, the cloth vanishes. And once he speaks again, the cloth is restored. When all the other gods and his father see this, they say, Marduk is king. Quote, that was a quote. Marduk then receives his scepter, throne, investments, all symbols of powers, as well as matchless weapons. Don't know what those are, but he gets those too. Now, Here's where it gets ugly and violent and bloody. Marduk then captures Tiamat with a net, uses herbs to block her poison and lightning to immobilize her. Then he harnesses his winds to his chariot, chariot, to his chariot, places a halo on top of his head, smears red lipstick on his lips, perhaps some type of magical protection or maybe just decoration, I don't know, and then calls on his magical power, the thunderstorm. Marduk then defeats all of Tiamat's monsters. And after seeing this, Kingu is shook. I mean, he is quaking in his boots. He is scurred, okay? Marduk then scolds Tiamat for not loving her children and then he attacks Tiamat. He attacks Tiamat. When Tiamat opens her mouth to try and eat Marduk, he drives the winds into her belly and her belly fills and distends and her mouth is left agape. She can't close her mouth because the fierce winds are mm, just getting up inside her, you know? Marduk releases an arrow. It tears through Tiamat's belly, tears through her insides, and splits her heart. And now that she's subdued, Marduk kills her. Kills her. He cuts down her body and stands upon it. Now after killing Tiamat, all the gods that followed her, her little band, is shattered. And he makes all of them his captives. Marduk then tramples on the demons, takes the tablets of destiny from Kingu and fastens them to his own chest. Then he mutilates Tiamat's body to create the sky, the earth, and the rivers. The Lord treads on the legs of Tiamat and with his sparing mace, he crushes her skull. When the arteries of her blood are severed, the north wind bears it to places undisclosed. On seeing this, his fathers are joyful and jubilant. They bring offers and gifts of homage to him. The Lord pauses to view her dead body so that he may divide the monster. He splits her like a shellfish into two parts. Half of her, he sets up as the sky. Marduk organizes the universe distributes tasks to his followers, and turns demons into statues and memorials to serve as warnings to those who would revolt. And then he builds a temple to provide the gods with all of their needs. 
that would be the temple Babylon that's right Christians Babylon mm -hmm. we all know about that Ea suggests killing Kingu and using his blood to create slaves that will serve the gods and Marduk, Marduk is down with that. He's feeling this idea, okay? Quote, Blood will amass and cause bones to be. I will establish a savage. Human shall be their name. Savage humans I will create. They shall be charged with service to the gods, so the gods may be at ease. The Temple of Babylon is completed. The gods all gather within, with, within its walls and celebrate. They receive religious rites of worship from their new little savages. And in the end, that's the end. So Marduk basically puts an end to the chaos of Tiamat, whose waters were originally mingled with the fresh waters of Apsu chaotically. Marduk has killed, cut, divided, and organized Tiamat's dead body into the world, in the universe, in the sky. Her chaos is replaced by the order of Marduk. And I mean, really, the simplest way to look at this would be that chaos gives way to cosmos or order, and obviously, females or the feminine energy in and of itself becomes associated with disorder and chaos and then the male energy or people things become associated with order which you will actually see a lot of in later mythologies and stories and books and movies and everyday life which quite quite frankly is rude it's rude but you know so my point in making this video and the ones that will follow is to point out the connection between religion and magic or witchcraft. But I don't feel like I really need to do that with this story because, I mean, I feel like it's obvious the magic or the witchcraft was pretty bam in your face, you know? And it kind of started off as more magic and gave way to the birth of religion. Of the birth of a religion or worship of God's sort of scenario. Well, that's it for me, folks. Please stick around as we make our way through the timeline of the oldest religions and their affiliations with witchcraft and magic until we finally make our way to Christianity. Thank you for watching. Bye. Oh, and subscribe. Please, thanks, love ya.